Welcome to our lecture online. Close to 10 years ago, we published this video. And ever since we published the video, we weren't quite sure if the methodology of solving the problem was actually correct. And a lot of viewers wrote in saying they weren't so sure if they liked what uh, we did. And so when I started taking a closer look at it, I realized there was probably a problem there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to redo a very similar type problem at least get the solution to that and then see if we can extrapolate that to the problem that we had before and I'll give you the details about that in just a moment. So here we are, there's the problem. We have a car on a wheel, let's say the car has a mass of 21 kilograms. On top of that car we have another mass of 5 kilograms and notice there's no friction between the two masses. And then we have a pulley attached to the car, a string attached to a third mass and here that one is 4 kilograms and now the question is what is the force that must be applied to this car in such a way that the velocity of this object is zero in other words in downward direction that this object does not go down that everything stays in place of course we have to realize that once a force is applied and the whole caboodle so to speak all three masses are accelerated you would see the string here coming up at an angle and of course the angle here would be some angle theta, whatever the angle is right there. And the whole thing would then be accelerated in such a way that this mass would then freeze in place and, and those two masses would not, uh, well this mass would not be coming down essentially. So what would be of course acceleration necessary to do that and what would then be the force required to do that. And if we take a look at this problem just a little bit more, we begin to realize that there's a tension in the string here, let's call this tension 1, and there's a tension in the string here, let's call that tension 2. And now we've learned that if the pulley has no mass and has no friction, that those two tensions must be the same. So we can then say that tension 1 must equal to tension 2. Now, when we think of it, about it conceptually, we have a problem. You sit there and go, well, there's a mass here. That mass is going to be pulled down gravitationally. And is that not going to cause this mass to be pulled forward? Regardless of whether or not that this mass is being accelerated forward. And so, in other words, that's probably not the case if we can somehow cause this tension to be sufficiently large that the acceleration of this mass matches the acceleration of this mass. And notice that this force will ac accelerate this mass, will cause the tension to exist here, so will accelerate this mass, and will cause this to accelerate as well because of the angle here. You can see that there's going to be a force of acceleration in that direction for mass 2 as well. So that force will essentially accelerate all three masses. So to figure out what the tensions are, we can say, well, first of all, tension 1 has to be m1 times whatever the acceleration is the whole system, right? Because we know from Newton's second law that f equals ma, so tension 1 must equal mass 1 times whatever the acceleration is that mass. That's the tension that's going to cause that mass to accelerate to the right. To find the tension 2, what we can do there is realize that there's actually three forces involved. Uh, we can think of this as being m2g acting downward, m2g. Then there must be a force this way, which has to be equal to m2a. And then there's this tension right here. And notice that if this stays in place as is, relative to the whole system, then we can say that the sum of those three forces must add up to zero. In other words, we have the tension in this direction. We have the mass times acceleration in this direction, and that's, I guess, m2, not m1, so make that m2, and then we have the m2g in this direction. And so those three forces then must add up to zero if that mass does not come crashing down. If that's true, then we can say that the tension T, which is the hypotenuse, and we'll call that tension 2, T2, that is equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of these. So this would be m2a quantity squared, plus m2g quantity squared, like that. And that then can go in here, so this can then be written as the square root of m2a squared plus m2g squared. 
And now realizing that we know what m1 is equal to, we know what m2 is equal to, we know what g is equal to, this equation only has one known, the acceleration. So from this, we should be able to calculate the acceleration necessary to keep everything in place relative to the system. So we're going to square both sides. So we have m1 squared, a squared, is equal to m2 squared, a squared, plus m2 squared, g squared. And let's see here, we can then go ahead and move that to the other side. So now we have m1 minus m2 quantity times a squared. We're going to move this to the other side. This becomes a negative. And so here we have m1 minus m2 a squared, and that is equal to m2 g squared, m2 squared g squared. Now here is the key to understanding the mistake in the other problem. In the previous problem that we tried to do, these two masses were equal to each other. The mass on top and the mass hanging had the same mass. And notice when you subtract the two masses, you get zero. So we have zero a squared equals something g squared. So zero equals some number, and that's of course impossible, and therefore there was no solution to that problem. So therefore it needs to be solved like this. And we then realize that this mass must be less than this mass, or we don't have a solution. All right, so continuing with this, now we can put in some numbers, and of course I should square these as well. I forgot to put the squares on there. And so now what we can do is put in the numbers. So M1 squared, that would be five squared minus four squared times a squared is equal to, and this would be uh, two, that would be four squared times g squared. And so it'd be 25 minus 16, which is nine a squared equals 16 g squared and square, uh, take the square root of both sides, we get 3a equals 4g, or a must be 4 thirds g. So that's the solution. It, the force required is such that the whole system will be accelerated at 4 thirds g. So the answer is, in order for this mass not to be coming down, the acceleration must be greater than g, otherwise it won't work. All right, let's see what that's equal to. Uh, now we need a calculator, of course. And so we have 9.8 times 4 divided by 3, and we get 13.067, okay, so 13.07, essentially, 13.07 meters per second squared, of course, since g is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared. And then finally, to get the force, we know that F, is equal to the mass total of the whole system times acceleration. So F is equal to the total mass, which is 21 plus 5 plus 4 kilograms, multiplied times 13.07 uh, meters per second squared. There we go. So the force required would be, uh, that would be 30 times that. So times 30 and that would be equal to 392 newtons. So there you are. That is how that problem is actually solved and that shows why the problem that was done previously where those two masses were equal to one another, there cannot be a solution because then you realize the difference two masses equals zero. You cannot have zero A equals some number times G and that is how it's done. And yes, so we will then put the link to this problem in the problem that had the error so you can then go see how it's done properly.